Hi, and welcome back to Half Moon Tech Labs. Uh, we're down in the basement today. Actually, we're green screening into the uh, brewery. I'm in my office, actually. And this is the uh, 300 square foot brewery that's down beneath us in the, in the house below. And um, so real quick, I'll just give you a background. Uh, this, is, this won't be a brewing tutorial. There'll be some of that stuff coming up later, probably, but uh, not in this video. I just wanted to kind of familiarize uh, you with some of the things we use in the brewery and why I'm doing this project and, and why I made some of the choices I did. Uh, so in the background, we have what's called the, the uh, uh, this is the hot liquor tank. Uh, this is the heating controller for it. This heats up the hot water uh, that we're going to use to mash the grain in this vessel. That's called the mash tun. Uh, after that enzymatic conversion is done in that mash tun, that liquid is drained off into what's called the boil kettle. That's this one here. And that is where you strike a boil. And uh, usually for about an hour, give or take, you would boil. And this is where you add hops and you do the, the, the final cooking of the beer, so so to speak. So uh, anyway, that's the brewing stuff. Now, after the after the brewing's done, what I'm telling you this is um, the next stage is fermentation. So you have to cool this, um, the, uh, the, the hot, uh, what's called wort, which is the, um, uh, the liquid uh, at this point that's going to be turned into beer through fermentation. Uh, right now it's referred to as wort. Uh, you basically uh, transfer it into a fermenter. Some people use a five-gallon bucket. Um, you can use, a, I, I have here, I have a, st uh, a uh, conical stainless fermenter. Um, and um, this uh, is stainless steel, obviously conical because of its, uh, uh, it has this V cone down on the bottom. And um, this is where the beer is going to be um, introduced to the yeast. And this is where all of the fermentation is going to take place. Um, once the fermentation is complete in here, and you want to make sure that this is super clean. That's the whole point of this project, actually. Uh, this pump cart that I'll be telling you about, its purpose is for, um, I'm building mine, not to move beer product around between vessels. I have other little pumps and things for that. I want to use uh, the pump cart as what's called a CIP uh, pump. So I'll be doing clean in place. Uh, so you can use chemicals and hot water. Uh, to hot wash and use uh, a combination of um, caustic or acidic or both caustic and acidic cleaning solutions. There's all different ways that you can do it. But basically, you need a, a pump that can stand up to the aggressive chemistries and the temperature uh, required to clean these. And then up here, I have a handful of um, other vessels. These are uh, called Cornelius kegs or corny kegs, we call them. Uh, I have about half a dozen of these scattered around and some other larger kegs as well. So this and and these guys up here, those are things you would want to, uh, it would be great to have a, an actual CIP cleaning process for because you could just nuke these things and make sure there's no microbes, no wild yeast or bacteria left at all in these, and then uh, have a much better chance of having a good fermentation. So anyway, don't have to have a pump cart. You can do all the stuff by hand. I, I work part-time in a professional brewery and uh, and I do this at home for fun. So I would, and being as I like to build my own stuff, I thought it would be really cool if I could build a commercial pump cart. There's only one issue. Um, commercial pump carts, which uh, let me show you what they look like. There we go. Um, there's an example of one. These go from like $3,500 to $6,000. Okay. Out of the price range for most home brewers and most people wouldn't bother doing that at home anyway. Um, uh, it's, it's really not needed, but, uh, uh, but if you had one, it would be really cool. So, uh, I said, well, I'm not going to spend that kind of money, but I do like to build my own stuff. So why don't I go poking around on eBay and see if I get lucky and find, uh, let me, let's jump out of the brewery here for a second. I'm going to jump out of there and let's show you what the actual pump I found looks like. Okay. So and that's the motor actually, uh, the pump, you'll see the full pump and motor assembly in a minute, uh, as, as, as we go through this. But, uh, so this is a, what's called a Watson, um, I'm sorry, a Leeson Watt saver. <laughs> it's a Leeson Watt saver motor, uh, popular motor. This is a hazardous duty motor, uh, that's uh, washed down rated. And it also has a uh, broken fan guard on the back, as you can see here. And all these little dings you see here are from this connector that was flopping around in the box. So I got really lucky. I poked around on eBay, uh, specifically trying to find, um, these hazardous rated multi-horsepower, uh, three phase, uh, pump motors and pump motor combos. Um, now this particular motor mated to a Corcoran, uh, uh, stainless, a 316 hazardous duty stainless pump, which is 
fantastic, is also very expensive. They're about $3,600 for that pairing. Uh, that's not what I'm going to be spending on this project at all. So, uh, but I poked around and what I found was this was a new, uh, new stock, but in the box and it was just listed as, as, you know, there was a, you know, they showed the pictures that it was broken, but they said it was new. So I took a chance, uh, because I thought maybe it's just this Vanguard and the pump looked to be brand new. The motor with the exception of these dings on the side, I believe is also brand new. Uh, or at least I believed it was brand new. So I bought it and uh, I scored this thing. Uh, it was basically, I, I think it was insurance. Um, uh, it was it was an insurance deal where somebody just wrote this off and you know people buy pallet lots of broken stuff and then sell it on eBay. That's what this was. Uh, I spent $130, give or take on this, and it's perfectly good. I had to spend 20 bucks to change this fan guard in the back, a little touch up, on these dings on the side for the paint <laughs> and that's it it was it was a thirty six hundred dollar uh pump motor combo i got for 130 bucks and it's perfectly good so uh spend 20 bucks to change that fan guard and we're up and rolling so uh but we're gonna need a lot more than that um the one thing is you'll notice this is a three phase motor three phase 230 although this will run up to 240 250 volts but uh most most of these two 220 230 motors are also rated for 240 so they will work on us standard power um it is a two horsepower um three phase motor so uh that presents a problem in your house single phase power what do you do about that let me show you that is that is what you call a variable frequency drive this is a particularly cheap one uh, that is actually pretty reliable, though. This These have a pretty decent reputation. This one's made by an outfit called Vivor, V-E-V-O-R. I believe they have the same parent company as Lincoln, who make welders. I think ultimately it's a Chinese-owned company now, but they actually make, uh, they use um, uh, some American output devices in here um, and uh, makes them pretty rugged, actually. Uh, these have a pretty decent reputation, even though they're dirt cheap. Uh, something like this would set you back a couple of grand, uh, say 10, 12 years ago. Um, now you can buy this for less than a hundred bucks. I bought this one for $77. <laughs> so, and it, it can go up to 400 Hertz. We won't need to do that. We're going to be using 60 Hertz motors. Um, but, um, the beauty of this VFD is this variable frequency uh, drive is it'll take a single phase input 240 in, and it will invert that into three phases 120 degrees apart from one another. In other words, this will take single phase power and turn it into three phase power to control specifically three phase motors. And it does a great job at it. This is actually a really good one. Super clean too. This one actually, they call it a sine wave output. It's not a perfect sine wave, but it's actually a much cleaner output than, than, uh, than, than some others. Uh, and the fact that it's less than a C note is unbelievable. So, so this is the trick we'll use to get my single phase 240 power in the brewery uh, to run a three phase variable speed motor. This will make it variable speed. Uh, so that's, uh, but then we need something to mount it to. How about one of those? Uh, I went, uh, looking around on, on eBay again. And, uh, again, for less than a hundred dollars, I found a, uh, this is an outboard motor cart, uh, Marine rated. So it's all stainless steel, actually impressive too, because everything on this is stainless with the exception of like one little pin in this wheel and a cotter pin somewhere else, everything is stainless. And uh, so if we were to put a, a stainless steel platform, just put a, you know, basically a metal uh, plate on the bottom here, we'd have a place to mount the motor on the bottom. We can mount our VFD up here and we're on our way to making an honest to goodness pump cart that um, actually doesn't look too much different than that. If I do it right. Let's see how we do. Um, so there's also um, uh, the problem of uh, you're gonna have to have an enclosure. Uh, so again, uh, these are these can be extremely expensive. Uh, all stainless steel NEMA rated uh, waterproof box uh, made for electrical enclosures. Um, again, lots of new old stock on eBay, and I got this one for a fraction of its original price. Uh, so again with uh, you know, buying stuff for pennies on the dollar on eBay that's brand new in the box. Uh, sometimes a little patience pays off. It took me about three months to slowly collect all of the components that I needed. But, but when I was done, I had all this 
and uh, I've decided to go a little nuts and uh, get this process meter too uh, from uh, from an outfit that I've done a lot of business with. They've uh, uh, they 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 do uh, they make some really cool instruments and and uh, this is one. This is again less than a hundred dollars. This is what's called a process meter. At its heart, it's a voltmeter, um, but it's programmable via USB. You can download the app for nothing, uh, plug in via USB to it, and then you can set these scales and these numbers. You can you can do all kinds of cool stuff with these. So I set mine up. So here it says RPM instead of amps. Uh, I programmed this to actually display the um, the actual RPM of the motor, which is derived from a signal that comes off the VFD that I was able to. Uh, uh, to leverage. Uh, and then I express uh, zero to a hundred percent on this scale. I, I got rid of this and this says zero to a hundred uh, to show what the, uh, uh, what the percentage of the, of the ultimate speed of the pump is. Now the pump we have um, is a 3,600 RPM or basically it's actually 3,490 RPM is its ultimate RPM. So just under 3,500 RPM. It's, uh, it's very typical for a 3,600 RPM motor. You'll see ratings that slip a little bit around that. They're usually a little less than 3,600. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to set this thing up. I'm going to get, I'm going to put this fancy process meter in it too, so that uh, not only will we have uh, uh, a nice cart uh, with a pump on it, with the switches and controls and stuff, but we'll have a nice little uh, meter that will show us exactly what our output is. Um, and uh, we'll have a potentiometer as a speed control. So that we'll be able to do that and vary this from zero to approximately 3,500 RPM. So uh, let's plow into this project and uh, you'll get to see me unboxing this stuff and kind of noodling through how to put it together. And then uh, in the end, you're going to see the finished uh, product and I'm going to use it. I'm going to, I'm going to do a quick uh, test and uh, it's pretty cool actually. <laughs> so, uh, so let's get into it. All right. The hand cart was just delivered that I bought on eBay. This was less than a hundred bucks. Supposed to be stainless meant for an outboard motor stand, but uh, should serve as a nice uh, uh, platform for my VFD and brewery pump. So uh, package is a little damaged. Haven't opened it up yet. I'm assuming it's fine inside. We'll find out in a minute. Okay, just open it up. Uh, contents appear to be no worse for wear. Now I'm going to assemble it. We'll see what it looks like when it's assembled. Alrighty, and there it is assembled. It only took me about 10 minutes. Um, their instructions are terrible. Basically, it's just a picture, but you can figure it out. There's not a lot of parts. The only thing I would suggest is um, when you put it together, put this board on last because otherwise you're gonna have a hard time getting this on without breaking something. So, uh, but I figured that out beforehand and that's how I assembled it and it worked great. This thing is rugged. This is really heavy duty pipe and it's stainless. Check this out. It's a magnet, everything, all the nuts and bolts, non-magnetic stainless. The only, even the cotter pins, the only thing I found that are, uh, um, that will stick to a magnet are the yes these these tires are actually pretty nice they're dual ball bearing there's a there's an actual press in ball bearing like an off the shelf ball bearing that you can replace on the uh, inner and outer side of the hub um, and so the bearings are steel but everything including this cotter pin everything is stainless steel and a decent grade of it too um, these casters not stainless this caster basically just these two front locking casters are steel um, but they're high quality. Um, they do work. They do lock. Um, the only other thing I found that's not pure stainless is these little spring metal buttons that are used when you first assemble it. Uh, those appear to be uh, chrome plated steel or nickel plated steel, whatever. But um, other than that, this thing is, I mean, even the screws here, those are stainless steel. Everything. So yeah, it's uh, way more rugged and high quality than I expected, to be honest. And I'm happy with that. This is going to work as a, as a pump stand just fine. All right, on to the next step. All right, I ordered a 3 16ths by 20 inch by 20 inch stainless steel 304 grade uh, plate. And uh, that just came in and um, it's just a flat piece of stainless steel. Very heavy. It's about 22 pounds. I have to make a few notch cuts and do some contours on it so that I can drop it into this base. I've made a cardboard mock-up, as you can see. 
and so we need to make accommodations for the fact that it's going to slide back in there. We need to have some cutouts for the tires and it needs to cut off before this radius begins here that brings it back up. So anyway, I've made this cardboard mock-up. I can get this in and out without flexing it. So I know that uh, if I can cut the stainless, use this as a template, drop it on top of the stainless, I'll then have what I need to make my stainless piece for the rack. So off to the drill press I go. Okay, back in the basement workshop. Here we've got this uh, slab of 3 16 304. 20 inches by 20 inches. I've got it mounted up on the uh, drill press and this is real high quality 304 stainless uh, being uh, stainless that has chromium in it so it beats a snot out of drill bits but uh, anyway there's a trick you can use where you just use water as the lubricant and go nice and slow and steady and uh, you can do it without burning up bits as bad. So we'll see how this step bit does probably terribly but uh, we'll give it a try and use plenty of water and take our time and this will be the hole um, that the pipe will go through and then I'll uh, have to make a few notch cuts with the um, die grinder. So off we go. All right, so there we go. Um, that hole actually went through effortlessly. This is, this is the step bit that I used. It's a cheap, I think this is just a Harbor Freight, you know, high-speed steel, titanium nitride coated, probably just enough so that they could say it's titanium nitride coated. <laughs> anyway, cheap bit. Uh, anyway, old machinist trick, just uh, use water. No, it does not have to be distilled, um, but just use water as the lubricant. Plenty of uh, down pressure and uh, try and get a good uh, chip going and then... Uh, just lean into it and make sure you don't heat it up too much. Just keep putting the water to it. And that is a, so it's proof right there. Seven eighth step bit straight through a three sixteenths, 304 stainless effortlessly. And this bit looks like it's never been used. So anyway, just a little trick there. So now I have to uh, go outside and I'll take the die grinder and I'm going to nip off um, these right angle cuts here to open these all up. And then uh, we'll see if we got a fit. All right, so that first notch is done. Now I just need to do the other four corners and uh, bring it in and do a rough fit, see how it works. There we go. One, two, three, four corners notched out. This is where we drilled the 7 eighths hole. Notched there, took the flapper wheel from the die grinder and went all the way around, softened up these edges. Now we're gonna flip it over and uh, take the flapper wheel to the hole uh, surface. Decided I'm going to have the other side facing up. So, um, but anyway, let's do that real quick and uh, see how it works. And there we go. Voila. So we took the flapper wheel to it, deburred it, um, softened up the edges, took all the junk off the top here. So kind of a cool pattern it left on there. But to be honest, I'll probably take the, uh, um, the sander to it later, put a little texture on it. Uh, after I'm done, you know, mounting the motor and making marks and doing all that stuff, we'll probably ding it up a little bit here and there. So last thing I'll do will be to take it all apart, sand it down, and then do the final assembly. But real quick, I want to go over and throw it on the cart and see how it looks on the cart. Let's try that. Dropped right in. Fits like a glove. That came out really nice. Um, glad I ended up doing that. That, that works nice. Uh, cutouts around the tires. Beautiful. This is uh, where the radius begins, about right here, to come back around to the top. So this is laying on flat pipe right there. So this is all perfectly level. And uh, it is now 19 and a half pounds instead of 22 pounds. Uh, looks great. 
Looks like uh, it's going to work out nicely. So I just have to affix it to the cart and then mount the motor to it. And get on that next. Okay, just did a rough fit of the motor. Uh, took the uh, the motor and pump assembly, uh, threw it on top of a piece of cardboard so I could lay it on the plate and slide it around and not mar it up too bad. Uh, but I think I like this with the sanitary fittings uh, right in the front, uh, not encumbered by the framework at all. I can get sanitary hoses onto those fittings, no problem, with plenty of clearance. Uh, it's centered nicely on that stainless slab that we've got on the cart now. And I left a little bit of relief between the back support pipe that goes up to the VFD mount and the motor uh, fan in the back, the uh, the fan guard. So uh, yeah, oh, nice uh, Leeson duck motor, great motors. Anyway, um, looking good. So now we just have to uh, physically mount the plate to the frame, mount the motor and pump assembly to the plate, and then get to work on the electronics, get the VFD uh, mounted in a box and on that back plate, get everything wired up. We'll probably take that conduit and run it up, uh, lash it to that uh, pipe in the back. And uh, so that's nice and neat, not flopping around. And uh, there we go, off to the next step. So just to be safe, before I test this pump on the VFD, uh, I don't wanna run it dry. Uh, and I need to make sure that the phase rotation is correct. So what I've done is I've decoupled the pump from the motor. Now we can pull that right off. And now we're free to spin the motor either direction um, so that if uh, the first time I hook it up with the VFD, if it spins the wrong way, I'm not going to hurt anything. And I'm also not dry running the pump. So um, right now I'm uh, doing the bench uh, build. I'm basically just wiring it on the bench outside the box before I cut anything uh, in the box that's going to be mounted here. The VFD will be housed inside of a stainless compartment right there. Before I cut any steel, I want to make sure that the electronics are all working properly and everything's set up right um, in case I have to make some adjustments to the plan on the box. That way I haven't already cut metal and I have to go back and do something else later and hate myself for it. <laughs> anyway, uh, so now um, the uh, the next thing I did was um, I hooked up this phase rotation meter. Uh, these are kind of nice. If you have one, if you don't, it's fine. You can just kick the motor and see which way it spins. If it's wrong, just swap a couple phases um, and, uh, and try it again. But uh, in this case, I was able to, you can push this button, uh, spin the shaft, and it will tell you which direction the phase rotation is so, uh, so you don't have to guess. Anyway, I've done that already. This pump is ready to be wired up to the... Um, the bench uh, test rig, and we'll give it a try. All right, we're back at the bench now. Uh, this is the, uh, I got a, a real nice Saginaw stainless steel box surplus. It was a new um, new old stock inbox, and uh, it was in perfect shape. But before I start uh, cutting holes and punching um, cutouts in it for all the things that I need to mount, like the potentiometer for the speed control, uh, my start stop, uh, the power switch, um, and of course mount the VFD and then that is going to be the instrument that tells me what my RPM is and it'll give it as a percentage as well. So before I, um, before I start cutting holes in this, I decided to just uh, wire up the DIN uh, rail on the bench and uh, just we're going to run this outside uh, to make sure that everything's set up right. Uh, we've got everything programmed correctly and that it interacts with the motor correctly. And uh, after all that's done and I'm confident that everything looks good and is going to work good, only then will I start cutting my holes to mount everything that you see here. So we're gonna take this over next to the pump uh, where we were just a moment ago, and we're gonna wire it up and power it up for the first time and uh, just do a quick just power up test. We still have to do some VFD programming, but, uh, but for now let's uh, hook it up and see if everything comes up and um, basically a smoke check. Here we go. Well, it figures. Um, I haven't done this for quite a while, but I punched the photo button instead of video when I recorded the segment where I did the smoke check. And uh, so I missed that whole section. But anyway, I'm going to do a quick voiceover and just show you real quick what, what happened. 
Uh, so this is the uh, so the motor and the pump assembly were to the right of this cardboard right here about where my head is. Uh, and uh, so I just took oh, I just took the raw circuit uh, on a piece of cardboard, laid it down. The purpose of doing it of doing it this way is I wanted to make sure everything was working properly before I start punching holes in that uh, expensive metal enclosure. You want to make sure everything you've got everything worked out. Um, if there's, if you start punching holes and drilling and, and tapping and doing everything, and then you find out you messed something up and it's not going to work like you planned, you got to go back to square one. You need a new box or a new plan for that box because you don't want to do that. So anyway, so I did that. I did the smoke check, worked out great. Uh, but I'll also, um, use this opportunity to show you, uh, the, um, the power, um, uh, flow and uh, just talk about some of the signals in here just very briefly. So uh, single phase uh, 240 comes in in the form. Uh, remember here in the US that comes in as two 120 legs. Uh, we drop the neutral in this case because we don't need 110 and anything inside here. So uh, so 240 and ground come in. Uh, ground goes right over here to the, um, to the DIN rail connector on the ground uh, bus. The power comes in and goes to two fuse blocks. These are fast blow uh, fuses that I put in here. Um, these are called, uh, the, they're called midget fast blow, uh, fuses. These things, uh, um, are meant to protect the VFD. So the variable frequency drives have some pretty expensive, uh, output devices in them, uh, that kind of do the heavy lifting. And, uh, and if something goes wrong, that motor seizes up or something happens, it gets stuck or whatever, uh, you can burn this up in an instant. Uh, so you, pr you protect them with fuses, but in this particular application, you use these very fast blow electronic fuses. So anyway, mains come in, go through the fuse blocks, uh, come into the top of this 50 amp contactor. Um, I wanted to make sure it was well overrated. So, uh, so the mains come through here, go into the contactor. The contactor itself has a coil. It's operated by 240 volts. Very convenient. So uh, I just stole one leg off the top to go to one of the coil uh, inputs. The other coil input comes from the other phase, but it's routed through this push button. So I have this little illuminated push button, this push button switch. It's only rated for like three amps uh, and it's not nearly enough to, to switch what needs to go through here, but that's not what it's going to do. This little switch is actually controlling a, which is essentially a much larger switch, this contactor. Uh, and that's the trick you use to, to get small, fancy switches to control very large loads in other places. So uh, anyway, power button, uh, you mash that, it's, uh, the contactor is going to light up. The 240 comes out of the bottom, goes into the DIN rail. Again, the DIN rail, just a fancy, uh, you know, it's just a, there's just a bunch of connectors on here where then you can use it for distribution of power to all of your other things. Uh, so that's how I've got it wired up. Uh, uh, the two, um, legs of, uh, the 240 component come in here to the input to the VFD. They're wired right to the input. Uh, remember the VFD will create three output phases from that single phase input. Uh, so those go straight to the motor. Uh, and the VFD also has a 5K pot, uh, this potentiometer that's, uh, that's attached to one of its inputs. Um, its purpose is to vary the speed of the VFD from zero to 60 hertz, which is what the motor runs at. And we use frequency to control a three-phase motor. Uh, so as long as it has the right voltage present, simply by varying its frequency, you can you can make it go from say zero to 3600 RPM or whatever. This particular motor caps out at uh, uh, 3490, I think. Um, but uh, but anyway, and then we also have uh, this uh, switch here. This is actually the enable disable switch to turn the pump on and off, but it's not main power. When you click this, the VFD gets power, but nothing happens until you actuate the the run switch and that that tells this thing there's a logic uh you know circuit in here that's looking for that input and when it sees that it says okay go enable the output to the motor and only go up to the speed that i've authorized with turning this potentiometer to wherever i've got it you know if it's set for halfway it's going to go up to 1800 rpm just for example so that's how that's how the main power flows. There are a couple other little tricks on here. Um, you'll see there's a 60 millimeter fan 
that I'm using as an exhaust fan. There's a passive intake on the box that I put in, uh, and it's set up in a way so that water cannot get in, uh, but air can. So the air uh, is allowed into the box through the passive inlet, and then this is the powered uh, outlet fan. Uh, so two identical um, little devices hanging on the side of the box to let air in and out. But on one of them, you've got this fan that's forcibly exhausting the heat from inside the box out because you don't want to trap that heat inside the box. You'll burn up your, your, your VFD in short order. So uh, in really, really big cabinets, you may not have to have a fan assist because the, the cabinet itself can radiate enough power um, just in the form of radiation uh, so that it'll never really heat up uh, internally. But um, But for smaller enclosures, yep, you want a fan assist, uh, some way of getting getting the heat out. Um, so that's kind of the the catch twenty two with these these cheap VFDs, super cheap, not NEMA rated. Can't use them around water. So what do you do? You put them in a NEMA rated enclosure, and then you have to come up with a cooling solution. So that's what that was. So and luckily this VFD actually has an output on it, twelve volts, two hundred milliamps, enough to power that fan and then some. Uh, it also has another output, a zero to five volt output that I am leveraging to tickle the input of this process meter. This process meter, if you recall during my intro, will express the speed uh, as RPM, but also as a as a uh, uh, like a big power bar from zero to 100 percent. So anyway, fancy, <laughs> but uh, that's how that works. And um like I said, the smoke test worked good. So now, now that I know all these components work as advertised, I can now start punching holes and, and mounting this stuff inside the box and, and, and wrapping up this project. So let's get on to that. There we go. All right, last hole. Okay, so now we're setting up to just do the last couple of chassis punches. We've got, uh, uh, that's the intake um, fan cover. This is the exhaust fan cover. Actually, that one's going to be passive. This one will have the fan assist on it blowing out. Um, power switch there. This is going to be um, the uh, motor leads come in here. And power will be here. And we've got the uh, lid already all punched out too. So anyway, last couple of punches here. We'll do use a couple of these chassis punches. And then we'll do the final assembly. So here we go. All right, let's see if I can do these punches and record one-handed. Here we go. Uh, we're going to put the guy on. These are great. Those chassis punches. thing up and watch it break through. There it goes. All right, there we go. So now we can uh, pull that through. Take out that knockout. And there's one nice chassis hole. Let's do the next one. There we go. Okay, there we go. Two nice clean chassis punches. Okay. Motor connection, power in. Back to the bench.
And there we go with the uh, motor leads and the power input. So I've just dropped it inside here. This is roughly what it's going to look like. I got to pull this back out now because we have to mount the box to the backing board on the on the cart, which is where we're going next. Nice. There we go. All right. All right, the box is mounted. Now let's get the VFD and all the electronics in here and get this baby wired up. All right, we've got the box mounted. We have everything mounted inside the box. So the VFD and all the electronics have been mounted now. I have to be careful, this is live. Um, but uh, there it is, inside there, there's the VFD. It's pretty cramped in there. You see the DIN rail is pretty busy. Um, we have a powered exhaust on this port right here, and it's pointing back at that uh, back plate so that uh, there's no water ingress possibility there. Uh, that's the intake, same idea, pointing back that way. Um, and uh, the VFD has its own fan, um, but there's no way for the heat to escape the box except by radiation. So, um, so I put the fan in there to help keep things cool. Everything's properly fused, grounded, and there we go. Let me, uh, let me close this thing up. Okay, power on test. I intentionally have this wired so that when it's plugged into 240, uh, right now I'm just uh, stealing power off my 1450 with this adapter uh, from one of my brew uh, plugs. But anyway, it's a very light green pilot light when there's power present, but it's not on. I wired it this way intentionally. When you turn it on, should hear it click. Yeah. And it gets bright. See that? So it serves kind of a dual purpose. Do we have power and is it on? Um, oh, I love that process meter. That thing looks really nice. Uh, turn down. Let's turn this on. You should hear the contact or click. I'm sorry, it contact or clicked when that came on. Uh, this enables the um, the rotation, but I've got it set for zero right now, which is what it's doing. So let's turn it up. Around 900, it should go green. It's just how I've programmed it. I do have the pump decoupled still because I don't want to dry run the pump. Beauty. it turns red just to show you it's mid-range. Showing the RPM extrapolated from the frequency output on the uh, VFD. There we go. Now you can hear me talk. Um, so from zero to 900 RPM, I've got it set to just be um, just display in white. From 900 to 1800, um, it will be in, it'll turn green above 1800. Uh, to 30 or to the top speed of the motor, which is 3490 for this motor, uh, it will turn red in that range to let you know you're in the upper leg of the range. So I've kind of split it into thirds with different colors. Uh, but anyway, let's give that a try. kill it that way without using the pot. You could even set the pot at some mid-range level if you wanted to and turn it on. I've got it set for a two-second ramp from zero to whatever the program speed is. Nice. Okay. That's awesome. So that actually worked exactly like I hoped. Now I need to uh, hook up the pump. Uh, put the sanitary fittings on, and then we will give this thing a actual shakedown test with water at full power. Coming up next. Okay, we have two drums. One is chock full of water. It's about 55, 60, just about 60 gallons. Uh, let's just call it about, about 200 liters in here. This one's empty. 
Uh, I'm simply going to pump the contents of this tank over here while I vary the speed and play around with it to make sure everything's working right. And we'll get to we'll get a look at how forceful this this thing is here. So here we go. Power up. Okay, so like here. On. Turn the speed up. There we go. Okay, there's a quarter. Quarter speed. Half speed. Whoa, look at that. Like a fire hose. And full. Nice. All right, we're going to do a full pump test uh, next, full speed, see how fast this thing actually goes, and from that we'll be able to figure out our flow rate. All right, here we go. Let's uh, do a full uh, flow test, and we'll figure out the flow rate from this. I'm going to go right up to top speed, and as soon as I engage this, we're going to time how fast it takes to transfer approximately 60 gallons, about 200 liters, uh, from here to here. Here we go. Wow. <laughs> All right, here we go. Full blown run test. Well, as you can tell, I'm pretty pleased with that. That worked out really well. Uh, it worked out exactly like I'd hoped. Uh, it took quite a while to source the parts. I had given myself a budget of 600 bucks. I violated that by $200 because I couldn't help myself. I put some more bells and whistles on it, including that cool process meter, which I really like. But the fact is, um, I put this together uh, for pennies on the dollar compared to what this would have cost if I had bought a commercial cart. And now I have a commercial quality uh, pump cart for my brewery and uh, uh, let's figure out what the uh, the final let's turn on a calculator here okay and what did we have a 60 gallon vessel uh, so it was uh, 60 divided by the average uh, I did three runs the average is 32.5 seconds so that's 1.8 just about 1.85 gallons a second uh, times 60 seconds in a minute is 110 almost 111 uh gallons per minute and that's going through an inch and a half hose uh versus a two inch hose the inlet on this pump is actually two inches i've necked it down to an inch and a half uh, not always recommended to do that but for what i'm doing uh, with this that that will be fine plus i want to be able to accommodate inch and a half uh, uh, tc connectors on all my uh, brewery uh, hoses so anyway it's going to be great. I can set it for anything I want up to 111 or what does that come out to? Uh, uh, times three point, was it seven, eight, five? 
just about 420 liters. So 111 gallons a minute or 420 liters a minute, approximately. Um, that's, uh, that's cooking. <laughs> uh, really happy with that. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, thanks for thanks for sticking in there uh, and watching this. Uh, if if you've made it this far, uh, you're very patient. This was a long project. It took me a long time to accumulate all this stuff and put it together. Um, but I thought I'd share it. It was a fun project. Even if you're not into brewing, uh, these same techniques and things, some of the stuff you you may have picked up in here, uh, you, you could uh, you could use in the machine shop or for fan controls or for anything that that where a three phase motor uh, would fit the bill but you only have single phase power uh, in that area. This is a way to uh, uh, to basically take a three phase load, power it with a single phase input and um, and build whatever you need up to including a brewery cart. So there you go. Uh, anyway, thanks for uh, tuning in to Half Moon Tech Labs and uh, we'll see you. Thanks a lot.